Okay, in this video we're going to review the uh, kind of big ideas that you need for uh, polar coordinates on the BC calculus exam. So I'm not going to do any problems, I'm just going to kind of go through everything you need to know and then you can go off and do as many problems as you want. So let's, uh, let's get started. So first thing you got to remember is that um, the r that you're given is going to be a function of theta. So that's the polar curve and then you do everything that you can to that. So um, a really common thing to do is actually to convert it to rectangular, so you have to remember um, that when you're doing that, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta, and r is just that polar function, um, so r is the given curve, you have to do that. Sometimes you have to find uh, an x-coordinate, uh, a value of theta that puts you an x-coordinate, or a y-coordinate, or whatever, uh, they like to combine that idea, so... Make sure you have those memorized, because those are not provided on the exam. You have to know them going in. Um, so the next thing is you'll talk about a couple of different rates. So there's dr d theta, dx d theta, dy d theta, and dy dx. So there's a bunch of them. Um, first one's dr d theta. And when you find dr d theta, that's just a normal take a derivative with respect to theta. Um, but it's what that uh, has to do with that's really important. So dr d theta is um, you're going to make comparisons to the origin or the pole, depending on how you want to talk about it. Um, and there's a couple of options. So uh, this works a lot like speed, where you have to look at velocity and acceleration, and see if they have the same sign or if they have opposite signs. Um, so it's going to be a lot like speed. And uh, I made this little table. Hopefully you already have this kind of memorized. Um, but there's four things that can happen. You could have r be positive or negative, and then dr d theta can be positive or negative. So, for example, if r is greater than 0 and dr d theta is greater than 0, um, then you're going to be moving away from the origin for that value of theta, or at that value of theta. Um, if r is greater than 0, dr d theta is less than 0, they have opposite signs, um, then you're going to be moving toward the origin. And it turns out that anytime they have opposite signs, you're moving toward the origin. Anytime uh, they have the same sign, uh, you're going to be moving away from the origin. So we can finish off this table. So... Um, that's also something you just need to know. Think about it. Um, memorize it. Hopefully you already know it. And it is exactly like speed, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, what's next? So next, uh, I think we're going to talk about uh, dx d theta and dy d theta. So dx d theta and dy d theta, you find them using the product rule. Um, so there's no point in like memorizing a new formula or anything of that sort because you're just going to you know, plug in the polar curve for r and then find the derivative uh, using product rule. And uh, these, again, you'll probably have to interpret if you have to find them. And so dx d theta, you're going to talk about whether or not you're moving left or right. Um, sometimes you have to talk about uh, your relationship to the y-axis when you're talking about dx d theta. So in that case, you would want to know where you are. Are you in the first, uh, first or fourth quadrant? Um, or are you in the second or third quadrant? And the sine of dx d theta, what does that tell you relative to the y-axis? And something really similar will happen for dy d theta. So dy d theta, you're going to be moving either up or down, or you'll talk about um, the relationship to the x-axis. Are you getting closer to it, or are you getting farther away from it? Um, so again, you just think about where you are in the coordinate plane, the sine of dx d theta or dy d theta, and kind of summarize. Um, so none of that's all that bad. Um, there's another rate. So, so far, dr d theta, dx d theta, dy d theta... Um, it's kind of a lot to memorize, but hopefully you've been doing problems all along, so this isn't really that new. Um, the next thing is dy dx. So to find dy dx, all you're going to do is dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So that's the same way you find um, dy dx for parametric equations, um, except then it's dy dt and dx dt, usually. Um, so dy dx is going to be just dy d theta over dx d theta. And then when you write the equation of a tangent line, I think some people uh, are a little weirded out by this, but the tangent line is in terms of x and y. Um, so the x-coordinates and y-coordinates tend to be messy because the unit circle tends to be involved. Um, so you'll have radical 3s or radical 2s or things like that in there. Um, but the line itself is in terms of x and y. So the next thing that we want to talk about is polar area. So polar area, you've got to have this memorized. It's one-half the integral from a to b, which is the starting uh, theta value and the ending theta value for the region, and then r squared d theta. So there's two things that people frequently forget here. First one is the one-half, um, and this, and the second one is two square. So if you forget either of those, you're kind of doomed, so make sure that you don't. And this is kind of what a polar region looks like. I mean, it's not a very good polar region, but you can see a is where you start as you go counterclockwise. 
So it's the first theta where you hit the region going counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. And then b is the last value of theta for which you hit the region. And then r is actually just the polar curve. So it's very straightforward. It's almost always either a calculator question or a set up the integral type of question. Um, or if it's on the multiple choice, it's which of these integrals gives the area of the region. Um, and then, of course, we can find the area between polar curves. This is a less common question, but, I mean, it's just as fair. So we could have to find the area between them. And in that case, the picture will look something like this. So we have um, a, a closer to the origin polar curve, which I'm using lowercase r, a farther away curve, which I'm using capital R, and then we still have our starting value and ending value. So when this happens, it's a lot like finding um, volumes of revolution around either horizontal or vertical line. Um, so disks or washers, you might call that. And the way that we calculate it is basically we find a large area and we subtract a smaller area. So it looks like one half the integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared d theta. And if you kind of distribute it out, you would see that it's just the larger area minus the smaller area. Um, the mistake that people make on this if they set it up correctly, well, I guess they're not setting it up correctly if they make this mistake, but uh, the most common mistake I see with people on this is um, they will subtract and then square, but what you need to do is you need to square and then subtract. And this would almost certainly be a calculator question because uh, the polar curves tend to get really messy when you square them. Um, and then there's two things that I think you should keep in mind. Uh, one of them is you got to remember to use any symmetry that you can. So polar curves tend to have a lot of symmetry, like a rose curve um, will have you know five petals. So if you can find one petal and multiply by five, that's useful. Um, things of that nature. Um, and if you look at some of my other videos, my polar videos, I talk about the uh, symmetry that you can use uh, in greater depth. And then another thing to keep in mind is uh, you can always estimate how reasonable your answer is just by using actual rectangles or circles. Um, you know, try to try to circumscribe the region that you're finding the volume, the area of rather, um, and you'll get a sense of whether or not you're right or wrong. Um, you won't know for sure, obviously, but you could definitely know if you're wrong by doing that. So I definitely recommend it. And uh, we got one more thing that I want to mention, which comes up in a lot of free response questions, and that is uh, related rates. So they're very easy related rates questions because you tend to just be told uh, dr d theta equals this or d theta dt equals this, and you kind of plug in. So just remember your chain rule um, when you get those. So dx dt is going to be dx d theta times d theta dt. Um, the same idea, dy dt is dy d theta times d theta dt. And then finally, sometimes you have to find dr dt, which is just going to be dr d theta times d theta dt. So nothing really groundbreaking there, but it does come up. And every time it comes up, uh, my students tend to look at the question and kind of have to hesitate for a second. So I wanted to throw that in there so that you're aware of it and thinking about it. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is give you a list of FRQs from uh, 2007 on. So you can see that it's been on the exam uh, seven times that we know of. Uh, those last two, 2014.2 and 2015.2, um, they're on the kind of secured audit exam, so you would have to ask your teacher if you can see those problems to practice with them. Um, but I hope you uh, found this video helpful, and good luck.